Hey everybody, welcome to another Goodie Reader review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're checking out the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite. It's an e-reader that we've been very excited about to get into our gadget labs here. And we're going to give you a full hands-on review. We're going to show you ebooks, hardware, software, the store experience, pretty well everything to do with this device we're going to document for you today to give you a sense on what this is all about on a hardware level you have a six inch screen the resolution is fairly phenomenal at 1024 by 768 and it's running at 212 ppi you have two gigs of internal storage but with preloaded content and everything you're going to get about 1.6 or so two month battery life fairly good considering even if the light on this is on you'll still get roughly about two months. You have Wi-Fi in order to connect up to the internet with this version, as and you can see here, it's special offers as well. It supports a myriad of ebook formats, including Kindle-friendly formats, PDF, text, Mobi, PRC, HTML, doc, RTF, and so on. Peter here is gonna give you a full 360. All right. No more page turn buttons on the Kindle. I'm not a big fan, but uh, you know, with enough touch screen interactivity, it should be fine. But uh, yeah, very, very few buttons. There's actually only one button on the whole device, which is a standby and power button, and we'll show you that. So I like the layout. It's nice and clean, kind of like the new Kobo Glow, just nice and simple, nothing too crazy. No home button, got rid of that too. As I said, the page turn buttons are gone, gone on that side as well nothing going on up top flipping it over to the back side you see you have a very nice embossed Kindle on the back kinda like the Kindle Fire has been doing hard rubber backing really nice uh, quality offers a decent amount of grip and on the bottom is where all the stuff happens you have a micro USB port status indicator light and a standby button and power button so click it once to wake up your device and turn it into standby press and hold for power on or off you notice there's no DC charger on this this is because this the e-reader itself is uh, charged when you plug it into your PC netbook laptop etc and this is also the way that you copy or side load in your own ebooks content other things taking a look at the main screen here it's really changed from previous iterations of the Kindle you can see this is a really proper home screen every other Kindle model that's ever been released is very similar here to another Kindle e-reader this is the Kindle 4 uh, 2012 edition kind of thing or just the Kindle as they're calling it now um, even if you press home you're sent to here which is your home screen really does look more like a library list of books or a books folder uh, comparing it to the brand new Kindle Paperwhite you can see it's worlds of difference I mean this is like Michael said a proper home screen and when you see this you know you're on a home screen when you see this you're not quite sure exactly and initially when we started reviewing Kindle e-readers all the way back with the, the Amazon Kindle 2 this is what we were used to and it was you know very confusing I am a big fan of the new way that the Amazon has done the home screen for the paperweight much more intuitive you could see here that we have made our own collection here and it's very easy to make collections you can just select books and put in it so basically our collection is just all the side loaded content that we've put in here so we're going to show you side loaded ebooks complex PDF documents comics etc this UI on the top is persistent so because Amazon has uh, absolved physical home buttons all this is pretty well the same here so you have your home button back your light button your shopping button you can search as well as sort of your settings button here so you can launch the web browser. So it's not as buried as it was well, once was in, in settings and stuff. I agree, but if you notice, it is still experimental after, what, like six years or something like that? So I don't think their browser will ever be <laughs> considered fully released. Yeah, it's, it's always going to be experimental from the day it was released to now. Yeah, until the day it dies. So you can see here, view special offers. 
you can kind of get a sense here. Um, you could remove special offers. You have to log into your Kindle account on your PC or whatever type of device that you use. It costs roughly about $20 to remove it, but it is possible. So if you don't like ads, let's take a look at here. You can see this is the cloud. So these are the books that we've downloaded or purchased at one time or another. You could swipe to see what's on the next page. You can see here dictionaries. Now we've never downloaded any dictionaries for any of the versions of the Kindle, but you could see here there's German, Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, and a number of other dictionaries, Chinese, etc. here. If you wanted to download any of them, you could just click on it and it is basically copying to our device. So Amazon is in uh, a lot of different markets right now and it's intending on entering even more uh, Brazil and Japan as two of the imminent markets that it's going to be entering. So this is a larger file so it's going to take you know at least a few seconds or so but now it's gone from the cloud now and it's going to be on our device. So you can see it's here. So pretty interesting. Let's take a look at the ebook experience. We're going to uh, check out what a book looks like that we have purchased from Amazon and show you all the interesting features. We're going to look at a book we purchased first on the Amazon Kindle store before we get into side loaded books so we can show all the features. Uh, something to note first, and we'll show this uh, more thoroughly when we get into the store experience, is that when you download a book, make sure, if you do want this feature, that it says X-Ray Enabled or Disabled. This will give you X-Ray, which is kind of a look into all the characters, references, terms, people that have been used throughout the book, and where they're used throughout the book, and how many times they've been used throughout the book. So you can see here, Cross is a major character because his status bar is almost completely full of all his quotes and um, things he said and all the times he's been mentioned and all that. Whereas if we choose maybe a secondary character like Carrie, she's a little bit more spread out throughout the book. And uh, we can also go to terms. So how many times Google or Vegas has been mentioned, or Manhattan, you can go exactly where those terms have been mentioned in the book. So this is a really good tool just in case you're juggling two or three, maybe four or five books at a time. You go back to another book, you forget who's this character, uh, what did they mean when they said this, now you can kind of look at that. Yeah, X-Ray is a cool feature. As a word of note, it does not work with side-loaded books. So if you're loading in your own Mobi or PRC files that you've converted from EPUB or you've just straight downloaded Mobi files from the internet, X-Ray won't work. It'll only work with books that uh, are coming from Amazon, either free books or purchased books like the Sylvia Day book that we're looking at today. Exactly. It's a service that gets delivered to you upon download. Let's look at uh, font sizes because it's always really important to know how to kind of change the reading experience to your liking. You have about eight different font sizes here so you can look at how the extremes would look, kind of tiny, or if you have trouble seeing. Um, oh, looks like we're only displaying the one. <laughs> there we go. So, I mean, it's a little little bit big and it doesn't show many words but you know it, it's there if you need it so that's always a good feature to have so you can go as large as you want or as small we'll keep it kinda standard here you also have six different font options so whatever kind of font you like reading most you can choose that you have line spacing squeeze them all nice and tight together make use of the uh, six inch screen kinda keep it in the middle or go really spread out margins you can compress it to almost a small newspaper-esque column or you can put it right from edge to edge. Amazon's done a really good job at their ebook augmentation experience. Not only can you change the fonts but you can highlight and it's a long press on a specific word. Instant dictionary definition you could highlight 
show the full definition. Now, this is from the new Oxford American Dictionary that we uh, had installed. If you speak a different language and you're reading different language ebooks, you can associate your core dictionary with ebooks. So you can look them up in like German or Chinese or Japanese and such. You can see a lot of different things here. And when you click more, you can share. You could, this does with basically Facebook and Twitter. You can add a note. So Peter here is just going to write a little note. How does the keyboard feel? I like it. The way they, um, they have a little shadow under each of the keys makes it almost look raised, which is a really cool kind of, uh, kind of way they designed it. I, th I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. Let's just write, uh, predictive typing too at the top. Yeah. Yeah. I see that, that it gives you things in case you don't want to type the whole word out and it kind of, um, already knows what, where you're kind of going towards. So you can see it played catch up, but it typed it accurately. It followed me, uh, in a, 10 or so character word there and we'll just save that so you see here that a highlight and a note with a little one there has been noted so anytime you want to go back to that there's your little note so you can uh, go ahead and make sure you keep track of what uh, what notes you're taking and you can actually share them so if you have class members or um, uh, fellow readers and you want to share your thoughts on a particular sentence or a uh, word like we showed you or you can of course box more and you say look at this sentence of course share it highlight it add notes share the notes and so forth this is Wi-Fi or there's you know other options available so this really allows you to look things up on the internet like Wikipedia Google uh, things like that you could also report content errors these are all sort of new things also translation which might be a huge thing for people that are you know looking to um, you convert words from like one language to another and you can see that we have French here and this is something very cool and unique to like uh, you know the new generation of e-readers that Amazon's putting out so translation very cool there's not a lot of other companies doing this I think that was a good feature yeah because a lot of the times maybe you're reading uh, a book to test your language skills and you're not quite sure if you have it down you can always translate it to see if you are correct so I thought that was a very good um, very good feature. You can also see here what Michael is demonstrating that it's kind of like when you have those crash errors on your computer and it says, would you like to report this crash error? So the company who uh, provided that, that program or content can then uh, reissue it in a way where it's fixed or altered or you know, just change so that it won't crash anymore, much like these. If you see a typo, maybe when they wrote book, they put too many O's. So you can report this to Amazon and they'll change it for you. Yeah, I mean, this, I think, would probably be most useful for people that are self-publishing with Amazon. And so they're doing their own editing, their own writing, their own converting from, say, like a Word document to a Kindle-friendly format. And sometimes there's formatting errors and they don't catch that, but you do. So you could do this and then the author or publisher publisher will be notified. Big six publishers, bestsellers, most of the time you'll never use that, but with self-published books you will. So this is a book we've purchased from Amazon. You can see there's a lot of features here. Let's take a look at a side-loaded book and see, you know, if anything's changed in terms of uh, what types of core features, you know, we have access to. All right, so let's go... There we go. Our little collection here. And this is a side-loaded Mobi file we've, pre we've uh, loaded in via the USB cable at the bottom. So we're just going to open this up. So you see here, let's get to some full text. Here we go. And you can see that X-Ray is not available. Because we didn't download this from Amazon.com, we purchased it elsewhere, um, the X-Ray service haven't, hasn't been delivered to us with this book so well, there's nothing for it to go on when we try to search for characters and terms and plots and all that kind of stuff in terms of dictionaries uh translation uh you know changing line spacing and fonts has does this all still work with siloed books i believe it's based on the text not so much on the book so if we 
we can still add notes based on our highlights there. We can still box certain amount of um, sentences and text, translate it based on the text. So this is not um, this is not based on just the book. You can actually do this with any text that you highlight. You can see even on a side loaded book we have a full translation. I think this will appeal to a lot of users where it seems a lot of the times when you sideload books you get penalized. You can't use the dictionaries. There's a lot of features that are um, limited or you, you're not able to access. It really does look with uh, sideloaded books on the Kindle Paperwhite that all features are available to you other than x-ray. So you can still change fonts, you can change the font sizes, you can share things with you know Twitter and Facebook and things like that. Same thing, you click on um, you know fonts and they dynamically change. There's a, a lot of kind of cool features here. So this is the ebook experience. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is look at a complex PDF. Um, a lot of people are reading academic PDFs, game books, um, and we want to see how the, uh, good of a job the Paperwhite does at speed of opening things. Again, this is a 100 meg file. It opened up pretty fast. Opened up really fast. We've seen a lot of trouble on the most recently reviewed Icarus Pocket and uh, Icarus Excel, and it took quite a while to open up a file this big, and this one just kind of opened right up. So, um, very complex, very big, very, very big file. Uh, let's get to a page where we have both pictures and text, and then we'll do some tests here. All right, so maybe get to there we go. Something not so dark. So let's try double tapping first off to see what that does. You see how it's it's uh oh there we go. Doesn't look like you can pinch and zoom. So what we're gonna have to um, rely on is reflow options. So let's see what kind of options we have here for that. So we have contrast, just going down the list. You can make it nice and light. Or you can choose a darker setting. Let's keep it kind of on the lighter side here. You have landscape mode because it doesn't have a um, accelerometer or gyroscope. the other way so you got landscape mode there that looks significantly better it does look it, a lot better uh, in landscape mode than portrait mode it is for this particular uh, for this particular book because uh, I mean PDF because it just fits more makes better use of the screen yeah. I, as you can see here this is this is the dungeons master guide it's very complex there's tons of images there's tons of text this is sort of an example of the large scale type of thing so it doesn't really allow you to do like a lot of reflow type options but you can double click to kind of zoom in on specific segments but I would probably say that if you're into reading manga if you're into reading digital comics or uh, academic type text I would probably say that landscape mode things are showing up better and you can actually scroll up and scroll down uh, which is something that you can't really do in a, a portrait mode and it looks like specific segments you could pinch and zoom in now is that only with pictures or can you do that in general you see you have kind of this temporary not quite rendered portion of uh, navigation um, I know the Kobo Glow had this option, and it had a little uh, preview of where you are on the page. It's kind of a little harder to find where exactly you are on the Paperwhite because, I mean, there's no preview, and, and you're not quite sure, you know, where you're at in any given page. Pages. Yeah, so let's just go to a picture here. Look at the contrast on that taking advantage of the tremendous amount of resolution this paper white has. So how exactly, I noticed initially you were pinching and zooming and nothing happened. What did you do different in order to pinch and zoom here? 
um, it probably just wasn't registering before because of the size of the uh, the PDF. It is a side loaded, very large PDF, so you do have to be patient with it. And we're just showing everything as it's happening here, so uh, this gives you a good indication of um, how it will be when you're using this device on your PDFs. So. So if you zoom in on specific segments, the last thing I want to know is, is can you churn pages from one page to another while still having your sort of zoomed in? You see we're on this kind of column, and it looks like we can explore this column. It doesn't look like we can turn pages it kind of just goes a little wonky from there it almost looks like it's it's not quite registering the strokes of what you're doing when it is zoomed in so that's unfortunate because sometimes when you do zoom in you kind of find that sweet spot in which a page of text looks really good and you've optimized it and then if you want to turn it to another page it kind of sucks this, that you have to do that all over again yeah see uh, a, a lot of uh, devices like pocketbook have pretty good reflow options but it looks like yeah see now it goes to the next piece of text which is the page number and it's uh it's get it's it's just not quite registering what you want it to do so it looks like for these particular um PDFs you will have to rely on pinching and zooming and unrendered navigation until you get to that point in the PDF and then let go and it will register. Okay, now that we've looked at complex PDFs, side loaded books, and normal ebooks, let's just take a look at the overall store experience because this is something that we really want to dive into. Um, it's persistent at the top. Yeah, so you click the little shopping cart to go to the store, and uh, given that your Wi Fi is all enabled and everything, it should go to the store quite easily. And uh, we've seen this kind of layout similar on the past Kindles, so. Um, it's going to be pretty familiar, and uh, you'll see here we have books, newspaper, magazines, Kindle singles, Kindle serials, and uh, everything pretty much organized for you. Yeah, so if you're a member of Amazon Prime, you can actually get ebooks for free um, with their various programs here. So this is cool. You can sign up for Prime on this device. You need to actually do it on your PC unless you sort of go through your web browser, but that'll take a long time. Uh, Kindle Singles, they're basically books that are uh, too short to be a novel, but too long to be a featured length article in the magazine. Uh, Kindle Serials is sort of like their new form of uh, serialized fiction. It almost harkens back to the days of like old TV shows where there was cliffhangers at the end, and ne next episode, it picked up where it left off. This is like the literary equivalent of that. Um, you once saw written serials in really old newspapers, and that was sort of how they kept on uh, selling newspapers uh, all the time, especially weekend editions. You can get games and active content. So there are games for the Kindle. Um, there's quite a number of them. None of them are really too complex because of the limitations of an e-ink screen. But you can see for yourself here. There's a lot of content. If you've ever had an Amazon Kindle before, you'll know that they have about a million and a half books right now, currently in their ecosystem. They list them all here. And it's sort of a two-column approach, which I think is very cool. And if you are interested in science fiction, like I am, you can click on that and it will sort of load up the next tier of options it looks like it's taken a while. Anyways, let's hit the home button. Um, you can see that we do have collections here. And it does have, as we pointed out before, a number of options. You have your experimental web browser, but what I kind of dig is settings, and then it actually has. parental controls and this is a huge thing because more and more people with Kindles are having families now and with parental controls you can device lock the unit you could also enable disable access to the web browser Kindle store to the cloud and then this way people won't be able to make impulse purchases or to you know rack up thousands of dollars like on your credit card on a whim which uh, sort of happens on your iPad a lot 
this is where you would sort of set up your default languages to the device. So we kind of showed you earlier how there's a lot of dictionaries. You could actually c configure your device for different languages. So it'll change like the UI, cancel would be, you know, the equivalent in Italian and such like that. So fairly cool. There's a lot of kind of options here that really aren't prevalent in a lot of the other e-readers. So we've showed you pretty well everything. And the last thing to do is to show you uh, some of the glow light functionality. All right, so we're just going to turn off a couple of the studio lights here. And uh, if you do want a full experience on how the glow is uh, in a completely dark uh, room, we will do nighttime tests versus the Kobo Glow and the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch with glow light. So just for the end of this video, uh, we will turn on the glow light. You can see it is off. And now we have turned it on. It is a little blue um, based on the uh, um, white balance of the room, but uh, honestly though, it is, uh, it's not quite as white as we were expecting because, um, I mean, it was called the paper white, and we are kind of seeing similar blue tones as we're seeing in the Cobalt Glow and the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch with Glow Light. So uh, we'll do, as I said, we'll do a full nighttime reading test, but you see you do have a full slider bar to go full light, and you can see you see right through that, or you can go the absence of light, and then there'll be absolutely nothing. Uh, just in case people have any interest, the glow is actually emitting from the bottom of the reader. Uh, if you turn it up full, you'll be able to notice that. So much like the Kobo glow, the lights emit from the bottom up, whereas the Nook Simple Touch Reader with glow light, it comes from the top down. More e-reader companies are doing the bottom up approach because you almost get a little bit of light spillage and traditionally people read top down you don't read down up so it's uh it's an easier experience so stay tuned for more videos we're gonna put this through the paces with a lot of its competition for a review of the amazon kindle paperwhite my name is michael this is peter everybody take care not even text heavy it's just text like that's all you really see and for you to get anywhere that has anything other than text you really have to go through four or five categories until you hit a book finally and then you can kind of dive deeper into what that book's about but until you hit this point there's there's nothing but just six categories of text for you to siphon through